Hello, welcome. This session we are talking about public folders and migrating public folders from a standalone exchange server environment, so no hybrid or anything involved, and migrating them up to a Microsoft 365 tenant. We're going to use the BitTitan migration with console to do this job for us, but first of all, we do need to have some things set up on both the source and the destination environments before we just rush in and start creating a project inside migration with. I'm going to be using the help desk articles on the BitTitan website just to show you what they are and recommend that you read them fully. Bring one up here. Read this one fully just to get a really good understanding of what you're doing, but I'm going to pick out the main points on what you need to do and actually do them in a live scenario on an Exchange server that I have locally and on the Microsoft 365 tenant to show you an end-to-end -end solution about how we migrate these public folders. Now, the first thing I want to point out on the article is that if you are doing a large number of public folders or more than 20 gig of data, you do need to have things set up first. So do all the steps that I'm talking about with the source and destination, prove the verified credentials work correctly and everything is good, and then contact the support, log a ticket, because there are certain scripts and things you need to run in the back end and they need to do to make sure that migration is successful. Uh, but if it's less than that, you can just continue and start migrating. So preparing the source then. There's a few things we need to do, as you can see here, and I'm just going to run through each one of them. First one being granting that organization management to the service account. Let's just take a look at that. We just jump into our DC quickly and we look at that service account. You can see if I click and look at properties and look at the member of, you can see this group here is the important one. Organization management needs to be a member of that. The next thing you can see here, it needs to have a mailbox enabled, preferably on the same exchange server as that source public folder database mailbox. You just run into the exchange server and we can look at that. And you can see here, yep, migrationwiz at migrationfrog.com does have an active mailbox. So we are good there. And lastly then, more importantly, it does need to have admin rights and permissions inside the public folders. Now, if we have a look at that article, it will explain exactly what we need to do. So we're going to take these commands as set out here and run them on the Exchange server. So you can see a quick copy and paste of that command. I've changed that user to the user that it will be in the source environment. So I'm just going to grab all of that and pop that into an exchange shell. Like so let's see, there we go. Okay, so that's pretty quick. It has uh, given us owner rights to the migration with user against all of the public folders. So with that completed, we are done with preparing the source environment. So let's now go and have a look at the destination. We do need to do the modern auth. So I'm going to go and do that first, and then we'll do in the specific things that are needed for the, the public folder access. So it is good to have this one open because there is a command you're going to need in here to copy and paste in. So I'm going to jump into the Azure AD console now. So this is on the target environment. And inside the normal admin center, if we go into the Azure Active Directory side, we'll see this, and we'll have a look at that registration. Now you're going to see, so I've already got two of them in here. You can have multiple app registrations for the migration with backend. They will have separate application IDs, uh, but obviously the same tenant ID. You can have as many of those as you want. Um, there's no issue with that. As each endpoint that you set up will use the application ID that it's been given. So if you already see them in here, you can either reuse the one you've got in here, or you can create a new one. In this case, I'm going to create a new one just to show you how that is to be done. You want to click on New Registration up here and give it a name. And we can call this one Operation Reason, or PF, so we know it was for the public folders. We'll tell it that it's for this organizational directory only, and we will need to select the public wave here. Now, this is the part we need to copy from the Help Desk article. I'm going to jump back into here, and it is this line here that we need to so we'll copy that down and we'll paste that directly into here so we'll hit register there to get that created and the uh, first thing we need to do is just grab in the authentication item here we need to go down a little bit and just turn this one on so hit that as a yes and then hit save 
Now we jump into the API permissions. We do need to give it some permissions. And so we go here and we hit add permission. We're going to hit APIs that my organization uses. And we are going to type in Office 365. It will come up. We're looking for Exchange Online, which is right here. And it will be delegated permissions. And then down in the list here, we need to find EWS and turn that one on there. Add permissions. And we are good. Now we will need to grant the admin consent, which we do with this button here, and hit yes. And that will quite quickly do that for us. Then we're going to jump back to the overview of this registration because we need to capture some things here. We need to capture the application, the client ID, and also the directory, which is the tenant ID. So I'm going to grab both of those out, that, and I will copy those into Notepad. That because we're going to need them to do the registration of the modern auth on the project itself. Like so. So we'll come back to those in a short while when we need them. So if we look back at the requirements, you can see I've just gone through everything here and then it's done apart from these items. Now when we've got the modern auth for the source, that will be the client ID export and then obviously import for the destination. So what I'm going to do is just grab this here. So we do need this just to go in front of this guy and like this one here to go in front of that. And once again, we will keep that one for later on. Bring that little tab away then. You can see now we need to go through and prepare our destination for these public folders. So the first thing there, confirm the destination of your admin account has a 365 license and an active mailbox. I know it does, but we can just go and have a quick look at that. Just look at my users. You can see this is the service account we're using. It does have a license. It does have a mailbox. It is good to use. Then we need to make sure we have the first public photo folder mailbox created. And that is the little instructions here. But what we do is we'll just jump onto the portal, the 365 portal, and we will go through and create them. We go to the Exchange Admin Center and we jump into folders, public folder mailboxes, where we want to be, and we see there's nothing there yet, so we can go and create a new one. I'm just going to call this one PF Mailbox and let that go through. Okay, there, and then we'll jump back to the public folders. After a few seconds, that will come up here. Good, we can now create the new ones. So at the class, I'm just going to call it Migration Frog Public Folder. You can obviously name it whatever you need to name it. That one go through there. It'll give us public folder. First, though, we just add the root permissions in. We're just going to add the migration with service account into the owner privilege here. Browse. Migwiz, we get the uh, fluid come up there, save that. And then we can go ahead and create this as, as a test there. Make sure we can create public folders in here too. So that plus, I'm going to call it frog pf. That looks all good. So really, we have a good uh, base structure for our public folder. So let's go back to the requirements. So it's asking us to assign the default public folder mailbox to the service account user. So with this command here, which we'll do inside the PowerShell connected into the target 365 tenant. So let me just grab that and we'll use that here. So I've already connected in, as you can see, and we'll just pop it up in here because we do need to edit that slightly. That needs to be changed. Accordingly, so that will be figures at com, which is the service account on that side, and then the mailbox name, which you might recall from earlier, was PF Mailbox. So we'll run that command now. Okay, there we go. So we now just log into. Microsoft 365 with the service account, jump into Outlook, see that. We should be able to right click on folders here and do the add public folder to favorites. And then we can close, grab the folder, say 
yes add as favorite and if that can see it we will see it in here which it does obviously nothing in it but you can see that it's bound through here so it means our public folders are now working correctly with this even though we've just got a test one here calling it migration for pf but it's a good test it knows that everything's tied in on the back end with pfs and we are good now to move ahead so the last thing just jumping back into those commands here we're going to grab this one which is just taking off the warnings grab that and put that into yep and also the second one let's just grab that at the same time yeah just run them separately but i'll run this one first yeah nice and quick and i just want to run that one second there we go so really that's all our prerequisites done we've set the uh, obviously the, the quotas which we have removed made that unlimited and also include the max and receive mail size is 150 big that will obviously help us out with the migration if you don't want those to be in place once the migration is completed by all means go back and rerun these commands and return them to whatever you think more appropriate but now we're ready to jump into the migration with console and create that project so in the create project window we're going to click on public folder project and we will give it a name just call it migration for pf we'll give it a customer which is this one it's the one we've been using for all these migrations in all these sessions so far we'll continue with that and next step so the source endpoint we need to specify a new one can't use any of the existing ones we had so we'll go through and create one for the public folders so just give it a name but the endpoint type is going to be exchange server public folder and the url we'll give it will be we're using previously as well which is just that give it a username and a password like so and just hit the add button with the information here we can move on to the next step so for the endpoint that is going to be with a quick name with the plain and m365 the endpoint type will be 365 public folders and we just need to give it the admin name which is and you've uh, seen me use previously and the password like so hit the add and we are good to save and go to the summary page yeah now we hit save project and that will take us into the stream which i'm sure you're familiar with where we can start adding the items into this project and for public folders for this first example i'm going to talk about we're just doing the root of the public folders migrating that to the root of the public folders on the m365 side so that's quite simple we just hit quick add and we just put in straight forward slash like so now because public folders really do that like for like translation you can see that this really is all we need in here so i'm going to just click on this one and the first stage in the migration as with all migration with projects you want to do is hit start and hit verify credentials and as you would know that makes sure that all our binding all our source uh, credentials are correct everything we've done on the source is correct in terms of the prereqs and likewise on the tenant that means the uh, mod north is done and everything is good to go but i will mention something there is something that is uh, which we have forgotten to do can happen in these sort of projects we do need to go into the advanced options we do need to put that mod north stuff let's go in and just do that now glad i remembered that one you remember the stuff we uh we put into notepad previously we need to make some space for that and it's these guys so let's just grab that one there that in there and on this one or has that as well an additional item you want to put into the advanced options is this one here use application permission equals one put all these together so make sure that is in there as well now we can hit the verify credentials and see that go through so we'll kick that off and come back shortly once that completes now after a short time you can see it's come back and has completed verification which is certainly good news let's have a look before we just carry on and do uh, the actual migration itself i want to just refer back to this article here because 
once we've got verify credentials that's all good but there's some options in here i want to make you aware of as you can see here migrating public folder permissions now if the public folders already existed on the target environment you have the option to either re-permission those with what's coming over if there's names that obviously are, are the same and you're you're merging public folders together or not now that is this article here now it means that you actually just go into the advanced options and you can set this folder item here let me just show you where that is let's go back into the click here hit advanced options you will see if i click on source and destination see migrate permissions for and you can see new and existing folders or new folders only the default is new folders only i just want to make you aware of that item likewise the licenses allow you to do 10 gig of data per license purchased if there is more than that data you need to specify the uh, how many licenses can be consumed per pass and the default is one it is the item once again in the advanced options let me just that, show you where that is you can see licensing is just set to one depending on the size of the data you have you can adjust that accordingly so you want to be doing that as you as you bring things over and lastly uh, the preferred data center depends where you are in the world and how you're doing it but there is a, a whole other article on whatever data center is closest to you and your 365 tenant now we move on to the actual migration itself now depending on the size of the data and, and what you have you can just do the pre-stage and then the full migration as you would normally do in a migration project however if you look at down here into this help center because there are some recommended approaches you take with the public folders and it involves a few things in the advanced options some filtering that you would do but it really involves four passes the first pass really being that pre-stage and the discovery and setting things up the second pass which being uh, is a migrate data only it just does all of the data and brings that all across based on a date range then a permissions pass and then organizing the mail enabled public folders so if we stick to these four you will have a much more successful uh, public folder migration so i'm going to go through each one of these passes and do them on this test scenario we've got just to show you um, how every one of them is to be done so on this first pass you see what it's doing here i need to go and add this item into the advanced options i'll just cut and paste that and just run up into advanced options add one and drop that in save that i will just go back there quickly with more things we need to do and one of them is on the filtering side and you'll see from the guide same filter it by date only migrate items older than a specified date recommended to do six months that's really up to you how you want to do it i'm going to do one month on this one because i don't have anything that's planned here a month i'll say anything older than uh, let's suppose we actually just do 20 23 here is the hour and save that and we're ready to kick off this first pass which i'll do here that and all of these passes are run as full migrations this and it's warning us at the top saying we do have uh, advanced options set so this one does get marked as a pre-stage like i say this is first second third and fourth first one is really a pre-stage we just hit one and say start migration and come back shortly once that's finished and check out what it's done that one's now completed so let's move on to our second part which the instructions here say firstly we need to remove the advanced item we put in there the maintain watermark completion state let's just in there and just do that would be this one that can go and it wants us to add in this one just copy that in there good save and select by date and we're going to say checkbox only newer items than the specified date do that again more advanced options filtering and we'll say add out and newer items on that date we had before. The Jan 20, 23, and 00, zero again. Here we go. So then we'll select that again, hit start, and we'll do a full migration more. 
go and start migration. Come back shortly once that's completed. There we can see that one has completed and it has got some data in there, which is uh, nice to see. Notice that the, the date modified is what it looks at when it looks at the date structure for what's in the public folder. So if you had an item which was dated yeah, four months ago and it was only copied into that folder and updated in the public folder uh, yesterday, then of course the date it looks for the filtering is going to be that modified date, which is going to be yesterday, which is why sometimes you can look at the dates and think, why did it move all of those items when I specify those particular dates? It is on modified date, not on the date sometimes that you see inside the public folder. Just something to be aware of when you're looking at the, the date structures. But what we're going to do now is just go back in here and have a look at this permissioning pass. So like it says, we'll remove that skip uh, import folder that we had for the previous one there. We're going to grab this item, fix it up in the advanced options. So we'll go back in there now. So we'll remove that and we'll add this one in. Save that item. And I will actually just go back in there. I'm going to remove that filtering completely now. We don't want any of that in place. So we'll save that too. So now once again, we'll hit this item and do a full migration. And start that. Come back shortly when that has completed. Right, all down there. Now, I'll just pop back to here because we're going to talk about these mail enabled public folders and some things that need to happen there. Um, but first, before I do that, I want to just jump into the console itself. Let me just do that. And have a look at these public folders. So you can see the public folder mailbox. That will stay the same. That was the, the main one we had. And if I look at public folders, we should see now two from the source, which are these ones here. So this was our little test one. Uh, we can quite easily just go ahead and delete that. That was just to test those permissions and things we don't see there, obviously. But what I want to do is have a look at these two public folders. So I had it logged in the, uh, as the service account earlier. As you can see, this one will drop off shortly because uh, I'll just remove it. That's the one we've just deleted. But what I want to do is just go in here and favorites, and we should see all of them. Now in the overview, you can't see the hierarchy down the left hand side. You have to select them and look at them here. But the fact that I can hit customers and hit add public folders and let's go to our store, grab just that one as well. We'll see, yep, there we go. There's our public folders. There's the data in them that we had on the other side, which is certainly a good thing. Now jump back into the console here because you can see here both of them are in fact mail enabled. Now, this is what I wanted to come back to with that screen. If I go in here and have a look at that address, you'll see it's going to pick up the tenant address. I click on email addresses. Uh, we can see here, look, here we go. So it's got the right prefix, but it hasn't taken across what the other domain is. Now, that's because we haven't brought across that migration frog domain into the tenant. So it's just applied that alias and dropped it in here. Now, that is why I wanted to talk about just quickly the items here for the mail enabled public folders. What you have is a separate article. And if we click on that, we can see that. And it talks about mail enabled them. What you need to do is you need to export all the addresses from the source and it creates all the scripts that once you are completed and you do your cutover and bring the domain across, then you can import all of those email addresses and apply them back to those public folders. So that's as I say well, I wanted to show you that afterwards and that is how that is to be done. So I'll come back to the migration with console. Just as the last thing there, we can click on the item and you can see all of the different folders it's got and all of the items it's copied over, how much of that was contacts and mail and the like. So we get some statistics around the project. Nice to see that everything worked correctly. So I'll finish up this session now. I'll just leave you with one thought and that is anybody that's done a public folder migration in the past with the native tools, obviously this is a a much easier way of doing these types of migrations. You can also use this tool to bring over the, uh, the public folders and map them into shared mailboxes instead, which is a, a different project definition. When you go and create the project, you can select public folder to, uh, to shared folders, shared mailboxes instead. That's certainly a good option. 
Um, but really, this is it. This is how you'd migrate them nice and easily with that migration-based product. So thanks for watching, and we will, again, talk to you again soon. Thank you.